This is the fifth video in our series, Get Started with the BigQuery Export. If you've missed any of the previous videos, head on over to the YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch those back at any time. Today, I'm going to show you how to extract event parameters from within your BigQuery data. To do so, we'll be working with the event params field, which is something that we looked at in detail in the third tutorial. So click on the link above if you want to catch up with that and then come straight back here. So by now, I'm sure you're familiar with the structure of the data in the export. Each row represents an event that was collected on your website or app. And within that, you'll have numerous columns containing uh, information about that event. The event params contains multiple fields nested within it. Those fields can contain information such as the page location, the page title, or if it's purchase, it could be the currency or the value associated with that purchase event. So understanding how to work with this data is one of the key things that you need to master early on in your journey. Here's an example of the event params field. You can see nested within each row, there are multiple different parameters. And depending on which parameter we're looking at, the value might be stored in one of a number of different columns. Let's jump over to BigQuery now, and this will all become much clearer in a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to extract a list of event parameters and then count the number of times that each one occurs within our data. I want to draw your attention first to line four. You can see here we are specifying the table that we want to query within the from command. But then after that, we've got the unnest. With the unnest command, we're passing in event params and then we're going to label that as EP. So essentially what that's doing is instead of having one row with multiple different parameters stored inside it, we're going to explode that out so that we have one row per event parameter. And we're just giving that the alias EP, which we will use to refer to it in other parts of the query. So you can see up here on line two, we are selecting EP.key and we're calling that event parameter. Then we're going to count star as the number of occurrences. I'm just going to jump back here so you can see ep.key is referring to this event parameters dot key field. So we're going to extract a list of all these event parameters and count the number of times each one occurs within our data. We're grouping by the first column and then we are ordering by the second column in descending order. You can see now we have a list of all the event parameters and a count of the number of times each one occurs within this table. So now that we know what parameters exist within our data, we can then construct queries to extract the information about those parameters. So this is a slightly different format of query that you're seeing now. Again, we're querying the same table, but we're only going to pull out events where the event name is page view. You can see here on line two, what we're doing is essentially a query within a query. So we're going to select the value dot string value from the unnested event params, but only where the key is equal to page location. So jumping back to this example here, you can see page location is the key and the value of the page location is stored in the string value field. So what we're doing here is we're saying, find the occurrences where the key is page location and select the string value from that and we're calling that page location. You can see now we've pulled out all of the page location values or the URLs for each of those page view events. Some of the data we want to extract isn't a string, it might be an integer or a number. So to extract that data, we need to use the int value field. Again, going back to this example, we can see 
the GA session number is stored in the int value field. Here I'm just going to query the events where the event name is session start. And now we've got the GA session number pulled out in its own column. And you can combine multiple of these subqueries all together in one query. So in this example here, you can see we're pulling out the event date, the event name. Then we're going to pull the page location, the page title. They're both from the string value field. And we're going to pull out the GA session ID and the GA session number from the int value field. And now you can see in our results, we've got one row per event and all of those event parameters that we specified having their own column. We can also use the event parameters to filter the data. So here you can see I've added a where clause now. Again, I'm using a sub query to extract the relevant data and I am focusing on the GA session number. I, I want to filter now to only include events where the GA session number is greater than one. Now you can see here, we're only extracting the rows which meet that condition. And of course, we can combine multiple conditions together in the where clause. So now I've added a condition on the page title. So we're going to pull out rows where the session number is greater than one and the page title is equal to home. And again, you can see now we're seeing the results at the bottom here based on those conditions we set in the where clause. And that's how to query event parameters. As you can see, it is a little bit more complex, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see it isn't really that difficult at all. One final thing I would like to call out though is just to make sure that you are referring to the correct value for the event parameter that you want to query. So whether that be the string value here, the int value or the float value, just make sure that you're referring to the correct field within your subquery. Otherwise, you'll end up wondering why the data isn't coming out as you would expect it to. And it could be because you haven't specified the right field here at the beginning of the subquery. So come back next time, we're going to cover off user properties, which as you'll see is pretty similar to event parameters. See you then.